Fender makes so many models, it makes my head spin. Not long ago, it was a pretty easy choice. There was just one Telecaster model and a few color options. Now there's hundreds, plus the Squire Classic Vibe series and the other import versions to choose from. I have a Squire Classic Vibe Tele that I really like. So for this review, I'm going to compare my $399 Classic Vibe to an $1,199 Fender American Performer Tele. Aside from the different features, I also want to see if I could perceive a quality difference in a genuine Corona-made American Tele. Sometimes it's an intangible that makes one instrument better than another. It may not be quantifiable, it's just something that feels right. The Fender American Performer Telecaster is the lowest cost made in the U.S. Telecaster you can buy. Introduced in 2019, it replaces the American Special Series with several upgrades. It's available in two models, the classic Tele two single coil pickups for $1,149 or the model that I'm reviewing which has a humbucker in the neck position for $1,199. Sorry, no case for that price, but you do get a gig bag. This is the aubergine color with a rosewood fretboard. The other tele colors in the American Performer series are vintage white, satin surf green, and sunburst. The aubergine color is a burgundy with a little metal flake in the finish. The combination with the black pick guard and the rosewood fretboard make it a great looking instrument. There's several features that attracted me to this model. I have a Made in China Classic Vibe Tele that I love, so the fact that this was a real genuine USA made Fender was not really a big part of the decision making process for me. What first drew me to this model was the humbucking neck pickup. I'm not a fan of the Tele models with humbuckers in both positions and the large wraparound pickguard. I just don't like that look. I prefer the classic pickguard and the Tele bridge. Plus, if you have a Strat style bridge, now you've kind of lost the vibe of the Tele. But I do like the idea of a single humbucker in the neck position because it doesn't change the look that much or replace the Tele bridge. Another feature that attracted me to this model was a completely stupid small detail. I love the transitional logo. I guess because this is the logo I remember when I was a kid and it just takes me back to them. I'm not a brand snob and I don't care that my Squire doesn't even have a Fender logo, but for some reason I like the transitional logo. Go figure. The body on my Classic Vibe is pine and it has a polyurethane finish. The body on the American Performer is alder and it also has a polyurethane finish. The body on the Classic Vibe is routed large enough for a humbucker in the neck position and has shielding paint everywhere and foil on the back of the pickguard. The body routing for the American Performer does not have any shielding paint or shielding on the body cavities or the pickguard. The weight of the body on the American Performer is just under 8 pounds. The Classic Vibe Tellies run about the same weight and mine is a little less, around 7.5 pounds. Other than the type of wood, the bodies are identical. Do you feel that the body wood affects the tone of the guitar? There's some that believe that the wood of the guitar has no discernible effect on the sound. I believe the body and the neck wood do affect the tone. If so, then maybe the pine sounds different from the alder. Or maybe not. I haven't really done any specific tests, so I really can't say for sure. The American Performer comes with either a maple or a rosewood fretboard, depending on the model. The aubergine model has a rosewood fretboard. Some people feel that the choice of fretboard wood changes the sound and the rosewood fretboard has more mids and is darker sounding and the maple is a bit lighter and snappier sounding. Then again, maybe it just could be the color makes you think that. I don't know. Personally, I think it's mostly looks, but there are differences. Maple necks are made from one solid piece of wood, so you would think it would be a stronger, more rigid neck. The rosewood fretboard is glued to the maple neck like a stringer or a lamination, so it may even be stronger. I don't really know. I like both maple and rosewood. The rosewood fretboard on the American Performer is a nice, dark, even color. It's not dull or gray or striped, which I've seen on a lot of guitars lately. 
The neck on both guitars is maple, and the classic vibe has a vintage amber tint that makes it look like an older guitar. The American Performer maple neck is very white. It's too white. It may sound like a ridiculous detail, but I don't understand why Fender can't use tinted lacquer, like on the classic vibe, to tone down the white maple. To me, the super white maple just cheapens the look of the guitar, and for no real savings in cost or manufacturing. I don't get it. So come on, Fender, put some toner in the lacquer and you'll sell more guitars. Both the Classic Vibe and the American Performer have a 9.5 inch radius and a 1.65 inch nut. The nut on the American Performer is synthetic and the Classic Vibe has a bone nut. The Classic Vibe has 21 narrow tall frets and the American Performer has 22 jumbo frets. The grain of the wood in the neck is tight and straight on both the Classic Vibe and the American Performer. The neck shape on the American Performer is a modern C, which is fairly low profile, and the Classic Vibe has a C-shaped neck. Even though the nut width is the same on both guitars, the American Performer modern C-neck feels wider across the fretboard and flatter. The American Performer has a satin finish neck, and the Classic Vibe is a gloss finish. Some people feel that the gloss is sticky, for me, I like both finishes, and either gloss or satin is fine with me. The pickups on the Classic Vibe are both Alnico 5. The Tim Shaw Design Yosemite pickups on the American Performer are a combination of Alnico 5 and Alnico 4. The Bridge pickup is an Alnico 4 and is hotter than the Classic Vibe with a DC resistance value of 7.9K. The humbucker neck pickup on the American Performer is an Alnico 5 double tap design. And this is where it gets a little complicated. Humbucking pickups are two single coil pickups side by side. The idea of coil splitting is not new. Just drop out one of the two coils on a humbucker and you have a single coil pickup. The problem is that just one coil of a humbucker usually sounds weak compared to a normal single coil. So the double tap pickup of the American Performer uses two single coils, but one is stronger at 4.28K and the other is a little weaker at 3.88K. The stronger side is tapped somewhere in the middle, so you can use part of the coil at 2.6K. Normally, a humbucker pickup would blow away a single coil. So what Fender does is weaken the humbucker pickup by using the weaker side coil plus half the stronger tap coil to produce a lower output humbucker and match more closely with the output of the single coil bridge pickup. When you select the single coil, you're using the strong side of the humbucker at 4.28K. In other words, when you use the full humbucking position, you're using the weak side pickup plus half the strong side pickup. Together, they're not as strong as a normal humbucker, but they match well with the single coil bridge pickup. This coil tap humbucker design allows you to get a single coil classic sound and a fuller sound of the humbucker and have a balance between both pickups. The master tone knob also functions as a push-pull switch for the humbucker coil tap, so it feels a little different. It almost feels like it's too easy to turn and doesn't have much resistance. The double tap humbucker pickup also allows some interesting optional wiring. Just for laughs, you could wire it with both full coils for a hotter 8.14K DC resistance, or use any part of the partial winding to get some interesting combinations. Here's some audio samples of the stock classic vibe pickups and the American performer pickups. <laughs>
also did an extensive review of the Classic Vibe pickups, and I've posted a link in the descriptions if you want to hear more of those pickups and the Fender Texas Special Custom Shop pickups. One thing to note is that the mounting screws on the humbucker are non-standard. There's three mounting screws. One side has two screws, which allows you to set the pickup angle. Just be aware that if you're replacing the pickguard, you'll need one with this configuration or have a custom made. The tone control also features the Fender grease bucket circuit. The effect of this circuit is to allow you to roll off the highs without emphasizing the bass. It's designed to clean up the lows so it's less bass heavy or choked. It works great with crunch and gain sounds to darken but retain some of the clarity. Here's an oddity. If you roll the volume knob down to full off, you'll notice that the last 20% of the travel of the pot goes beyond off and produces some hum noise. In other words, the guitar output is completely off at about 80% down. The last 20% of the rotation produces a hum noise. No clue. I don't understand it, but the same thing occurred on two different American Performer guitars that I tried. I've read some complaints online about the coil tap humbucker pickup on the American Performer Tele. One guy wrote that the humbucker was too microphonic, and another said the humbucker was too dark sounding. Here's one possible solution that someone posted. The pots are usually 250K on single coil pickups but the pots on the American Performer are 500K, which makes them brighter. The writer determined that the bridge pickup was too bright and the 500K pot made the humbucker in comparison sound dull. So he installed a 510K resistor at the selector switch across the bridge pickup winding so the bridge pickup would have a 250K load. The humbucker still had the 500K load and he was happy with the results. I have to agree with this guy's assessment. The bridge pickup is super bright, and when you get used to that much brightness, the humbucker sounds a little dark in comparison. I haven't tried this yet, but balancing out the sound by taking some edge off the bridge pickup makes sense to me. As far as the complaint about the humbucker being too microphonic, there's an audible click that occurs when you strum or play with a pick over the pickup. There's really no other place for the pickup to go, but unfortunately, it's really hard to avoid tapping on the humbucker when you play. So how do you fix it? Well, if you play with your fingers or you have a light touch, then it's not really a big problem. But if you're like me and your touch is more heavy handed, it might be something you want to check out. Having the humbucker pickup in the neck position is what first attracted me to the American Performer. I've always felt like the Tele neck pickup could use a little help, and I was hoping the humbucker would give me that something I was missing. The problem is that the Tele sound is the original pickups, especially the combination of both pickups, which define a lot of that hollow twang and the classic Tele sound. Even the elaborate coil tap humbucker design doesn't really sound like a Tele to me. Not that that's bad, it's just a different sound. The Tim Shaw design Yosemite pickups are bright and snappy, but usually I can get that with most Tele pickups. I tend to try to pull more mids and a fuller sound out of the Tele, which is usually harder to get. So the idea of a humbucker in the neck position should have been a perfect choice for what I was looking for. But after playing for a while, I found that it's got its own character and sound and it's not really the classic Tele sound. That's not a bad thing. We're all looking for our own signature sound. So the Fender Coil Tap Humbucker is just another color in the crayon box. When you listen to the audio samples, you might come away with the impression that the American Performer pickups are too bright and thin, or the humbucker is too dark and dull. Here's the real kicker. I recorded the same audio samples with the classic Vibe Tele and the American Performer, and when I played them back and compared them, it was obvious to me that I liked the stock classic Vibe pickups much better. The Yosemite pickup sounded too bright and airy. Here's what's weird. When I plugged both guitars into an amp, everything changed. 
the overly bright, airy sound of the Yosemite pickups now sounded exciting and sparkly. The Squire Classic Vibe pickup sounded less exciting. That brightness of the Yosemite pickups, which bothered me on the recordings, playing through an amp added an energy to the sound with an amp, and all of a sudden, I changed my mind about them. With the magic of tubes and speakers, now they came to life, and it was a whole different animal. It just goes to show you that comparing sound in the sterile world of digital recording sometimes yields a completely different result than real-world playing. The Classic Vibe and the American Performer both have the same classic ashtray-style bridge, but the American Performer comes with brass saddles, has the stamp pat pending lettering, and is more true to the original vintage telly. They both have three saddles, which is not exactly ideal for intonation, but they work fine. And if you want to get the intonation closer, you can buy the cut brass saddles with notches that allow for more precise adjustment. New to the American Performer Tele are the classic gears that attach with a nut and washer instead of screws in the back of the headstock. They have improved fine tuning with an 18 to one ratio. So the question is, is the Fender American Performer Tele a good choice? The American Performer Tele really impressed me more than I thought it would. Coming from my classic vibe, which I absolutely love, the American Performer surprised me. Aside from the pickups, I was looking for something to tell me this was a higher quality instrument. I'm happy to say it's there. I could tell it had something that translated to the feel of a better built guitar. It's what I would describe as a solidness and a liveliness. The notes pop out and ring longer. It's easier and smoother to play and it just feels more comfortable and in control. Does it make you play better? Well, no, not exactly. But I do think a better built guitar does give you an edge. You can't take anything away from the classic vibe, but the American Performer is better. It's just little things that add up to a better guitar. Like when you plug the cable in the jack and it feels tight and solid and secure. The build felt more substantial. The tuners felt like they were higher quality and would last longer. The alder body seemed to have a rounder sound and the satin finished neck, which I really didn't care about, became a feature I liked. And the low profile wide neck really fit my hands well. In contrast, when I went back to the Squire, it seemed to be a little lackluster. Still a great guitar and a third of the price. If you didn't have them side by side and playing them back to back through the same setup, you probably never notice a difference. But is the Fender American Performer better? Yeah, it definitely is. It's also three times the price. Do I like the pickups and the sound better? No. Actually, I think the stock classic vibe pickups sound better. There are things I don't like about the American Performer, so you really can't go wrong with either guitar. But there's something else to consider, and that's the model up from the American Performer, the American Professional. For $300 more, you get a real hard shell molded case, upgraded V-Mod pickups, a rounded neck heel for easier access to the high frets, a bone nut, intonated cut saddles, fatter, deeper C neck profile, tall, narrow frets, a treble bleed circuit instead of the grease bucket circuit, and arguably a better fit and finish. Yeah, it's more money, but I think it's a better value because the upgraded features outweigh the cost difference. So do I think that the Fender American Performer Tele is better than my Made in China Classic Vibe Squire? Yeah, I, I do. But if I was doing a gig and I had both these guitars, I would be happy to play either one. Fender makes Squire and they make Fender along with a whole bunch of other guitars. Fender is an American company and although its guitars are made all over the world, no matter which Fender product you buy, you're still supporting an American company. And let's face it, cost is a big factor for most musicians. If you've got lots of cash, by all means spend it and buy the most expensive model you can, and I'm sure it'll be a great guitar. But for most of us, it's a matter of squeezing out a few bucks between the bills to get a guitar with the most bang for buck, all just because we love to play more than we have good sense. 
So have fun and play on. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or pro, music is all about having fun. This is Brooks Reed. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and check the links in the description for more info. And oh yeah, please take a listen to my music. Just search Brooks Reed online. <laughs>